In this video, we're gonna look at the four ways the carnival diet made me a better Christian. While I've had great results with the carnival diet, I'm not trying to push it and say that in order to live a holy life that you need to be doing the carnival diet. I'm just sharing my experiences and what I've gained from it by trying it out. So if you want to try it out, I'm not a doctor, blah, 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 you know the whole disclaimer kind of thing. So try watch the video to the end. Firstly, let's look at what the carnival diet is. If you already know, you can skip to that timestamp there and we'll see you there. But for those of you who this is your first time hearing what the Convo diet is, here is the lowdown. The Convo diet is part of the family of ketogenic diets. Ketogenic meaning that it gets your body into a state of ketosis where you're burning fat as fuel rather than carbohydrates. So the Convo diet is more of a subset of the ketogenic diet. It's actually more like keto on steroids it's a zero carb diet. And to be more specific, this is a meat only, animal product only diet where you don't have any fruits, any vegetables, any starches, any sweets, candy, anything, none of that at all. All you eat is meat, preferably red meat or ruminant meat. In other words, meat from goats, sheep and beef. But the ketogenic diets in general live in a spectrum where some eat fruits and vegetables to some varying degree, all the way to the lion diet where it's just ruminant meat, salt, and that's it. So now that you know what I'm talking about, here are the four ways that the keto diet actually enhanced my faith. One, it made me more conscious of my body, the temple, and what I put in it. First Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20 say, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, you are bought at a price. So glorify God in your body. And for me, that was the transformational verse. In fact, that was the verse that got me started on the weight loss journey to begin with, that I wanted to glorify God with my body, that I needed to make sure that I was looking after the temple that God gave me. And when you're on a carnivore diet, because it's so restrictive, you're actually more conscious about the things that you're putting into your body, making sure that you're putting the right things into this temple that God has given you. So that's what I really appreciated about the carnivore diet, that it made me more conscious to drink more water. It made me more conscious to eat more nutrient-dense foods because I knew how important it was for me to look after this body, this temple that God had given me. Secondly, funny enough, it helped me resist the flesh. And if we go to Galatians 5 verse 24, it says, And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And I want to be honest, when you start the carnival diet, it really is quite hard. In fact, if you start any ketogenic diet, it's very hard in the beginning, especially as you're transitioning from using carbohydrates for fuel to using fat for fuel. If you're not strong then, that's actually when most people fail because they can't resist the flesh. The flesh will be crying out and wanting you to go back to having carbohydrates. There's a term for it, the keto flu, that you actually physically get sick in the beginning. That lasts for a little bit and it passes, but it's still something that's very real. But the good thing is, once you cross over and you learned how to resist the flesh, there's a sense of freedom that you have that I'm no longer bound by food. I'm actually no longer bound by cravings. And I tell my friends all the time that I can now, let's say, walk by a bakery and smell the bread and smell, you know, all the other little croissants and things like that. I can smell it and say, Wow, that's nice, without having the desire inside of me for that. And that is a powerful thing, especially in this day and age with hyper palatable foods and say, I don't need that stuff. The ability to resist the flesh will actually compound or spill over to other areas of your life as well, where desires for certain things just disappear. And then thirdly, discipline. The carnivore diet taught me discipline. And if we look at 1 Corinthians 9 verse 12, it says, But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. And while this on the surface kind of looks related to resisting the flesh, it is a bit nuanced here. That while you have resisted the flesh once, discipline 
is consistent resisting of the flesh. You do it once and you get that victory and you can do it again and you can do it again. And each win starts to stack up on the other one. And that's one of the things that the carnivore diet has taught me, especially when you're on a ketogenic diet. And this is why they say no cheat days on keto, because if you have a cheat day and you have a high carbohydrate meal or something like that, one, it kicks you out of ketosis, so you're no longer burning fat. But two, it messes with your dopamine and messes with your head. Your cravings come back and they go through the roof. And before you know it, you find yourself back to eating that garbage again. And there's one little caveat here that I want to add on the topic of discipline. And that is, discipline does not mean perfection. Discipline means consistency. And being consistent with what you're doing day after day, week after week, month after month, is what will get you your goals. That discipline stacks upon itself. The more consistent you are, the more disciplined you are, and that starts a good cycle. If you're getting any value from this video, please give it a thumbs up, a like, and please consider subscribing as well. And number four, the carnivore diet helped me build up my spiritual discipline of fasting. Now here I don't have a specific Bible verse that I'll refer to, but I'm sure it'll make sense when you hear. Often in the ketogenic world, people talk about fasting and it's more in line with intermittent fasting. I'm sure that term is common for those that are in the ketogenic spaces. In my journey through the ketogenic and the carnivore diets, I've learned to build up the discipline of fasting. I have to admit, it is a bit easier when you're actually on keto and carnivore because you don't have the ghrelin hormone busy kicking in and telling you that you're hungry all the time. So it is almost a cheat code, but it's not quite as well. And I have to admit, fasting for dual reasons, both for physical health and for spiritual reasons, has actually helped break down some of my religious preconceptions that I had about fasting anyway. And for me, whether I'm fasting like an intermittent fast or I'm fasting for a specific thing, I realize that when I am fasting, I'm able to connect with God in a different way. As long as I'm giving him that space and giving him that time, that it honors him. And in fact, you end up having a dual fast, one that is in purpose for weight loss maybe, but it's also very spiritual as well as you bring those two together. So I'd like to hear from you, what are your thoughts? please leave a comment down below. But the trick to the success is having a community. I think it was difficult for me because I had to piece together things over my journey and put it together by myself because I didn't have a community of people, especially one Christian and two in the carnivore or ketogenic space who I could share things with and dialogue with and go back and forth with and learn with. I had to experiment and make mistakes. And I say to my family that I was the first guinea pig because when I went with I went in blind, but that doesn't have to be for you either because I'm creating a community of believers who want to live a ketogenic lifestyle. So if you're interested in that and you want to look at this journey, there'll be a free course on how to start your ketogenic lifestyle in there that is both biblical, so we do look at some of the spiritual aspects as well as the physical and the science, and I want to mix all of these so that it makes your journey easier. So if you're interested in that, please sign up. The link is in the description, and let's start a community for people that want to glorify God in their bodies with the ketogenic lifestyle. And while I've grown a lot spiritually through this process of weight loss and through the ketogenic diet, and more particularly the carnivore diet, it wasn't all roses. There were certain things that, to be honest, weren't good for my faith at all. If you want to watch that video, click and tap there and I'll see you there.